first for breaking news and the best live sport. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Eleanor, thank you. Welcome, welcome to the programme. It's two o'clock, our top story at two. The BBC's acting director general tells the two people running BBC News to step aside. If the public are going to get journalism they trust from the BBC, I have to be, as director general, very clear on who's running the news operation. Tim Davy says he's getting a grip, but he insists that George Entwistle's £450,000 payoff is a matter for his bosses, the BBC Trust, rather than a matter for him. We'll hear this afternoon how some important people in broadcasting would advise Tim Davy as he gets that grip. And as you pay his wages, what is your message? Your message to the acting DG. Maybe you think that Newsnight has to go. Perhaps you want him uh, to say what he really thinks about George Entwistle's payoff, or maybe you believe that BBC News programmes should talk about something else. Are you bored of this as a topic? Is it too much navel-gazing? Uh, your message to Tim Davey or to this radio station, if you like. 85058. Stephen Barnett is Professor of Communications at the University of Westminster and author of books on the BBC. And Martin Campbell is the Chairman of the Broadcast Journalism Training Council and a former advisor to the media watchdog Ofcom. Good afternoon to both of you. Let me start. Stephen Barnett is a man who's written books on the BBC. Where, in the sort of the history of the BBC's troubles, where do you rank this? Well, I don't rank it up there as the worst crisis the BBC's ever faced, which is what uh, quite a few people are saying. Um, it was, it's, it's barely ten years ago that the BBC lost both its director general and its chairman over a report by Andrew Gilligan on the Today programme and the subsequent Hutton report. And uh, that was a, a brutal confrontation with the government of the day, which I think probably ranks above this one in terms of the seriousness of the crisis. And I, I, I honestly think that we're in huge danger of overblowing this, of turning what is undoubtedly a crisis into a witch hunt. Um, I, and I'm, I'm very alarmed by the long line of politicians in particular who love to queue up at the times like this and give the BBC a good public kicking for uh, often for no other reason than they don't really like it. But let me just bring in Martin Campbell then, the Chairman of Broadcast Journalism Training Council. Martin, the way the BBC has defended itself, when you've got uh, uh, those people who say we don't like the BBC, the way it defends itself is by saying, well, actually, the public like us, and that is by and large true. And in surveys, uh, the vast majority of British people seem to have a lot of trust in the BBC, and that's why moments like this are very dangerous, because if that trust were to dip below 50%, then the people people who have a bit of an anti-BBC agenda could win the argument. Yes, I, I think that's right. Um, we do need to get a perspective on this. I mean, we're talking about whether this is overblown or not. It probably is, but actually there's a lot that does need to be done with uh, the BBC. And if this triggers it, then I think it's no bad thing at all. I mean, m my advice, because you're talking about advice to Tim Davey, if, it, what the BBC needs to do, and certainly as far as news is concerned, is to behave, as your Vox Pox was saying, and as Stephen was saying, like a public service broadcaster. I think for too long it's been, if you like, operating within a, a bubble. It knows it's getting money in. Too long ratings have been too high on the agenda. It, it, it chases ratings to a ridiculous degree and has finished up with a management structure um, getting out of hand where odd things happen. I mean, like I mean, I wasn't aware that, you know, that they outsourced investigations. I mean, that was a news to um, Excuse me, that was news mm. to a lot of people. And that seems to me to be a bit crazy. I mean, wh wh what's all that about? It's a bit and then, uh, Well, it is. And, but then you, you know that something needs to be done when uh, uh, George Entwistle you know, says he doesn't ask questions for fear of appearing too interested. I mean, you know at that point that you're living in la-la land. So the, the structure of the BBC is not helping this. And I think if the structure changes, which people are saying it will, if that comes out of it, then good. Is there a better public service model around the world, Martin? When you say you should be better at being a public service broadcaster, what, uh, tell me more about what it should do to change. Well, I think what, what, what it needs to do to change it, first of all, is to, uh, to, to look at two things. One is the, the business of, of chasing ratings. Either it is a public service broadcaster or it isn't. The license fee is there to ensure the BBC can behave without the, a lot of the um, encumbrances that uh, hit commercial operations. 
But for years, it's been used to ensure that the BBC sort of survive in a quasi-commercial situation going head to head. And, and that's, yeah, that is not right. That's not what it's there for. And I think the Newsnight program ably demonstrates this, this ratings chasing because the, the second Newsnight program, the one that did go out, sadly, much akin to um, Philip Schofield's um, showing of the list to, to David Cameron. Where we have got to with broadcast news now is that a lot of the mainstream traditional media are continuing to, to tease listeners and viewers with what's on the Internet but without wanting to take any of the responsibility, i.e. it's not really us saying this stuff, but, you know, you can go and find it. And that, that I think, is a worrying broadcasting arrogance, if you like. Now, I think it's born out of frustration that websites, blogs, posts, um, they can create waves daily with quotes, news quotes, with a minimal risk of comeback. And broadcasters can't do that. But now everything is mixed together. TV is mixed with, with websites and with IPTV and newspapers and so on. So I think actually the regulatory platform needs to be looked at as well. Okay, look, we're going to come back to you in a moment. Let's take some travel. We'll continue this. Some text here. P. Adams says, yes, I, I asked earlier, uh, is any, are you bored of this story? What, have, what is your advice, your message to the acting director, General Tim Davey? Is, is, could your advice be to move on and talk about something else? And P. Adams says, yes, I'm bored with it. Just get on with normal news reporting, please. Somebody else here with no name attached to their text says, if a newspaper makes a serious error, it generally publishes an apology on page 10 and settles out of court with the personal company maligned. The BBC risks bringing its own house down with the intensity of its own self-criticism. The vast majority of its output remains completely completely untainted. The organisation requires perspective, not self-flagellation. Tom in Paisley, the BBC is totally morally corrupt, drunk on excess and completely out of touch from the public. It needs a total overhaul to ensure it properly represents the public who own the BBC. This is Darren of Hull. Newsnight is excellent. If you never take risks, you never make mistakes. Without this story, we were bound, we would be, um, There'd be no review into the homes in Wales. Remember this. Martin says it takes 1,400 poor old licence fee payers to cough up for George's extra dosh. It's a disgrace throwing money around like that. Give him what he's supposedly entitled to and nothing more. Even if half a year's pay is more than most people can earn in years and years. And finally for now, Alan says, I completely understand why Entwistle got his payoff. It would have cost more to have gone through a process. What I don't understand is why someone and so apparently inept was appointed in the first place. Patton and the Trust have a lot to answer. Please tell us your thoughts. We're here for you. Let's return to our two guests, Stephen Barnett, Professor of Communications at the University of Westminster and author of books on the BBC, and Martin Campbell, Chairman of the Broadcast Journalism Training Council. Um, Stephen Barnett, do you, when, the story to me, this may be absolutely the right thing, but do stories about the BBC get blown up uh, more than they would if the if the exact same thing happened on another broadcaster or in another part of the media. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's partly um, because uh, BBC often follows agendas set by newspapers. So you walk into any, as you well know, you walk into any studio at the BBC or any broadcaster. In fact, the first thing you see is the floor littered with uh, that morning's newspapers. And the first thing researchers do is they scour the newspapers and follow up the stories there. So when you have pages one to five of virtually every national newspaper in the country tearing apart the BBC, um, it's very difficult to avoid it, even though uh, very often those agendas are being set for um, commercial reasons or self-interested reasons. Mark, Martin Campbell, chairman of the Broadcast Journalism Training Council, uh, we met, one of you mentioned Philip Schofield earlier. Um, I mean, this it kind of illustrates the point I was making a moment ago, in a way, in that that was con widely condemned, wasn't it, as a, as a gesture, and, and it was seen as, I think, a naive move. Again, if that had happened on, on BBC Breakfast, I imagine it would have become a much bigger issue. 
Well, yes, that, that, that's absolutely true. I, I think it possibly would. And um, you are right that the fact that it is a, a public service broadcaster means that it must be seen to be more transparent and so on. So, you know, the, the self-flagellation that people are talking about, I'm not entirely surprised uh, about it. But, but in a way, um, you see, it, it does appear that the sort of thing Philip Schofield did is probably what Newsnight did. You know, and that is to do a nod, nod, wink, wink, it's on the internet, but it's not us saying it. You know, nod, nod, here's the list, you can't see it. Oh, whoops, you can actually. Um, but, you know, it, it is not us saying this thing, it is somebody else. So it's that sort of journalism that, that I think is disgraceful. But it's not, and I worry that Newsnight as a brand, because of um, the amount of coverage this has had, it is probably going to have to change. But in the long run, I don't think that matters if it means good news for news, a new structure. Not so much a look at the guidelines, but a look at how broadcasting should be operating within the new uh, media mix. Okay, thank you very much, Martin Campbell and Stephen Barnett. It is 2.31.